Alright, what is going on, lovely people of the world? These are the Harpies. Um, very, very difficult. Like, if I get an optimal draw, very difficult to stop this deck. But, it is also very easy to not get an optimal draw, and then it becomes a problem. Because one of the main issues with this deck is that I don't really have anything that can search. This was not fantastic. Not terrible, but not fantastic. I don't really have anything that can search the deck to find the cards I might need. Ah, uh, you know what? This became okay. This just got this just got very. I'm okay with this now. Kind of. I would have preferred to have like either an elegant egotist or the trap card that I have that would allow me to summon or that I can put down that would allow me to get an elegant egotist. But we will be satisfied with the hand we were dealt and hopefully make something happen here. This homie must have gotten a terrible draw if it's playing a 0-0 monster out the gate in defense mode. <laughs> There's no... Either that or I'm being set up for something scary. Fuck you. That's not gonna stay. What is that? What is that? Wait, 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 wait. Wait. God, I hate this shit. I'm not even gonna be able to... I may as well just sit... Oh, never mind. You can send one play time, but oh, okay. Choose one Sylvan card from your deck and place it on top of the deck. Oh, that's useful. During your opponent's end phase, you can excavate the top card of your deck, and if it is a plant type monster, send it to the graveyard. Otherwise, place it on either the top or bottom of your deck. Wait, what? Once per turn, during your oh, during your opponent's end phase. Okay. So basically, that would allow it to get two draws in one turn, and I am absolutely not okay with that. So let's go ahead and get rid of that card. Uh, Harpy's Hunting Ground, very useful as an anti-spell slash trap deck. Very good at clearing back rows. Uh, also very useful against Pendulum decks because you can destroy the scales that they put down because those qualify as spell cards once they're actually in the scales. Uh, the downside to that is if the opponent decides, you know what? Fuck it. I'm just not going to play any more spell or trap cards. Uh, at that point, I can't actually I can't play <laughs> any more Harpy cards. Or, I mean, there are some, like, traps or spell cards that I have that I can, uh, that I want to destroy for myself. So I'm not completely and utterly useless at that point, but it's still just kind of like, oh, this is a problem. Maybe? No. Shit. It's gonna ruin my harpy's hunting ground, isn't it? You motherfucker. I'm holding down the X button now, just in case. Okay. I was holding down the X button so that I could potentially solemn warning if I needed to. Um, the problem is because the problem with this card, he's a useful card, but uh, <laughs> since he's not a wind monster, he doesn't get the benefit from Harpy Ladies. But I also don't really want to. Uh, fuck it. Makes me sad that I, I've, I haven't been getting great draws. Like getting the Harpy's Pet Dragon is one of the worst draws that I can get because that is the last thing I want to draw. I want him to always be in my deck, so that if I get a Harpy Channeler, this card destroys an opponent once more battle, you can excavate the top card. You know what? I'm not even going to let him do it, because he's going to trade one for one. I'm just going to stop that from happening. No thank you. I still have Icarus Attack as a final, you know, oh shit, please save me, oh god, please no, don't do that to me. I may as well summon this guy now. But I really think I need to replace... Because I do have, there are two black wing cards. They do play off each other decently well. Uh, and one of them is, let me actually check. I can't remember whether or not. I think I could have checked that anyway. Ooh, my special summon. Oh, right, because these are level 4 XYZs. Oh, yeah, I forgot about this guy. This card can attack all special summon monsters your opponent controls. Once each, once per turn, you can attach one and then target one face of special summon monster your opponent controls. So this guy is very useful. And that's why, why I added him is because he sounds very useful. If somebody special summons something that's crazy. Uh, and because it, the reason why it's strong is because it requires three level four dudes to look at. But that, did I add any synchro mods? I did not. Wait, what? Oh, it's three level four. That's right, because Phantasmal Dragon requires three level four Harpy monsters. This one only requires three level four Wing Beast type monsters. Uh, but yeah, so like if somebody special summons something, you know, they summon like a 3,000 damage dude. I can then summon Raid Raptor. He'll have 3,100 damage. 
but then he can also attack all special summon monsters that have been used so the reason why that's really strong is just the simple fact that uh doing that oh you know what i can do so here's the fun you know in conjunction with this i can oh you know what i don't want to do that you know yes i do want to do that because i can still work oh never mind because i can get rid of his field card so this allows me to special summon all harpy lady cards that i have so i basically use icarus attack to clear off two cards my opponent has the only two cards left that my opponent has shout out to that and then I get to activate this by discarding a card, and guess what? I don't give a shit about Harpy's Pet Dragon. And now we just get that Harpy Lady back, but we also get a Harpy Queen for free on top of it. Because that was entirely necessary to win this match. I just wanted to show you that little combination because I love it. It's kind of the same thing, uh, for instance, Harpy Channeler. Uh, activating her effect requires you to discard a Harpy's card from your hand as well. Uh, but again, if I use that card, then I get to discard a Harpy's card, I get to summon something for free from my deck, then I get to activate that uh, trap, discard potentially another Harpy card, and then that trap will allow me to get back all the Harpy cards I just discarded, so I'm not actually losing anything. The downside to it is that they're all attached to that card, like that card is basically treated as one very large Call of the Haunted, so if that card gets destroyed, all of the monsters attached to it get destroyed. Oh shit. Please give me a Harpy Queen or a Harpy- Oh, that's a problem. We're starting off with problems. During your standby phase, you can special summon one Infernoid token to special summon an Infernoid monster using its own procedure. You can banish Infernoid monsters you control instead of those in the graveyard. Oh shit. Wow. That's a strong effect at the end there. Your opponent cannot target Infernoid monsters you control for attacks or with card effects, except the Infernoid monster with the highest level. That's a very real problem right there. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and summon the Harpy Channeler. We are going to use Harpy Channeler to get rid of the Harpy Dancer to bring in the Harpy's Pet Dragon. And then we are going to use the Hysteric Sign, which will give us an Elegant Egotist. I'm not convinced. You know what? I'm fucking, I'm just gonna do it. I was thinking I might want to save that just in case. So like, if I get a Harpy's Hunting Ground on the next turn, uh, I would not have a Harpy Monster to summon unless I wanted to blow Hysteric Party on only the Harpy Channeler, or the Harpy Dancer, which is not exactly uh, an activity I care to partake in at the moment. Oh, oh never mind. It's just the token. Fuck you. I'm actually mad about that. <laughs> the reason why I'm a little mad about that is that I can destroy this card, and if I do, I mean, it's kind of cool, because now I'm actually going to get to, I'm not going to get to kill him. I am going to get to kill him, because I'm going to have the Harpy's uh, pet dragon attack. But when you destroy this card, I get to target any three uh, Harpy cards in my deck and summon them, and so that would allow me to get a Harpy's hunting ground on the next turn. But unfortunately, now that he decided to send that shit back to sender, I gotta hold that. I'm gonna get to do a lot of damage down here, though, so that's cool. And then I have these two as my oh shit cards. And again, now that I have a hysteric party already there, I can use Icarus attack basically without consequence. Level 3, that's not a problem yet. It may become a problem. Let me hold. The attack of this card becomes twice the attack of the monster that you tributed for the tribute summon to this card. So it should be 3200. 3200. Wait, stop, 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 stop. Please let me do this. He didn't let me do this. You're a motherfucker. It's still not going to matter because I'm still going to be able to... Uh, I'm still going to be able to use Hysteric Party to bring them all back, but it still kind of irritates me a little bit that it didn't allow me to stop it while holding down X in order to actually trigger that shit. I guess I could have gone without doing that. Well, I say I could have gone without doing that, but I don't want to. <laughs> uh, I could have just not killed that card. Oh, hello. I could have just not killed that card, and I could have instead... Um, 
saved it, and used, you know, just used Hysteric Party to bring back the Harpies, which would put Harpies Pet Dragon atta Dragon's attack up above uh, that one's again. But uh, I can kill him this turn without it Wh by doing it this way. I think I could have killed him this turn anyway, actually. Come to think of it. But either way, I have just devastated him, destroyed him. Unfortunately, I don't get to one-shot him from 4,100 health with the Harpy's Pet Dragon, which makes me sad. I would have preferred to do that, but he only had 3,800 attack. Was that two? I think that was two, right? Yeah, we played Abyss first with this guy. Or no, we played Abyss with the six Samurai deck. But yeah, that's two. All right, so let's go check out the Harpy deck. I mean, you saw most of it. You saw the majority of it. Thankfully, the good part about the Harpy deck is I get pretty much everything. What am I looking for? Deck edit? Ah! Uh, so, well, you didn't see Book of Moon, but basically that just allows me to target one face-up monster on the field and change it to face-down defense position. It's just a card that's really strong against, like, powerful, uh, offensive monsters. So, like, for instance, that dude, if I had Book of Moon in my hand, and that guy summoned that card where the attack becomes twice the, uh, original attack of the monster. Now, number one, I think if it got turned over, it would have reverted that dude's attack back to zero. I'm not 100% sure on how that works, but I believe once you turn the card face down, it loses all of its effects that are active at the moment. So, I think it would be turned back to 0-0. Zero, zero. But even if it wasn't, it still remains that he only has 0 defense, which makes him a lot, a hell of a lot easier to kill than 3200 attack. So that's the main point of the Book of Moon. Uh, Dark Hole's Dark Hole. You saw Elegant Egotist. You saw this, just to kind of go over it. Every single time I summon a Harpy Monster, uh, not a Harpy Monster, a Harpy Lady, something that's... Con Considered a Harpy Lady or a Harpy Lady Sister. I don't have the Harpy Lady Sisters in my deck. I'll go over that in a bit. Um, but then I can destroy any one spell or trap card that is on the field. And so that also works in conjunction with this uh, Hysteric Sign. So you saw the first utilization of it, which just I get to get an Elegant Egotist from either the deck or the Graveyard. Which is why I only have one Elegant Egotist in my deck. Because with this card, I effectively really have four. Um... And so that's fantastic, and there's only three monsters in this deck that I can actually use the Elegant Egotist on, so one is more than enough when I have these three as well. But so when I first activate it, I just get to grab the Elegant Egotist from wherever it is. But when it gets destroyed, um, I get to then target any three... It has to be... They have to be different. I can't just like bring in all three Harpy Queens or all three Harpy Ladies. But I get to get three different Harpy monsters, or just cards really, from my deck. So I can use that to get Harpy's Hunting Ground, I can use that to get Harpy's baby pe or Pet Baby Dragon, I can use it to get any of these Harpy cards. Um, so that's a really good way where it's like, okay, I didn't get the cards I needed, but I do have this card and that allows me to get three cards that I may need. Uh, this is like just in case, you know, I need something gone so that I can get Harpy's Hunting Ground moving. Rageki's Rageki. Upstart Goblin again, the one flaw to this deck is there's no real way to search for monsters aside from this. But it's situational, right? Like, I have to be able to destroy this card in some fashion in order to trigger its effect. So, that may not be possible. So, Upstart Goblin may be able to save me a little bit. I don't know. Uh, these are all just kind of mainstays. Uh, Fiendish Chain is a card that I think I might want to get rid of, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Uh, it could be useful if I used it against something that's like, oh, if I summon this card, I get to get rid of one spell card. So, that would allow me to save Harpy's Hunting Ground, for instance. So it might, but I think it's a little too situational. I would prefer to have something better, I guess. You saw the usage of this. Uh, you saw the usage of that. Solemn Warning, Torrential Tribute. Those are those are those cards. You know those. Uh, these are the two that I'm kind of not convinced about. I don't really... I don't know. I'm not convinced I need these. I'm not convinced I want these. The problem is that it's very limited, again, on what Harpies you can have in the deck. So I pretty much have, like, the max amount of Harpies. I could put in, you know, two more of these, but I don't want two more of these. One of these is perfectly fine, because this is a very momentum-based card, and I'll get to that in a second. But so I wouldn't want to have a bunch of those floating around. That's something that I would that I would utilize, you know, this card getting destroyed to search for. I don't want to really just have it, because if I just get it at the wrong time, I get it at the wrong time. But anyway, to move on, Harpy Channeler, one of the best... It's basically the main way that I would want to get Harpy's Pet Dragon into the mix. I have to discard any one Harpy card... And then I can special summon any one Harpy monster from my deck in face up defense position, which is fantastic for Harpy's Pet Dragon, because as you can see, he has higher defense and he has attack. Pretty high defense, and then he also gets 300 more uh, for as many Harpy monsters are on the field. So if I have a Harpy Channeler there already, 
I bring in Harpy's Pet Dragon. He now has 2300 attack and 2800 defense. Very hard to get rid of when he's in defense mode like that. Um, the other bonus to her is that if I control a dragon type monster, her level becomes 7. His level is 7. So that allows me to get a level 7 XYZ monster. That's pretty cool. Harpy's Dancer is more or less kind of... I guess just kind of facilitates further usage of Harpy's Hunting Ground because her effect is that you can target one wind monster you control, return it to the hand, then normal summon a wind monster. Now that doesn't work for, um, like, you know, I couldn't use it to bring in him. It has to be like a normal summonable monster, not a tribute summonable monster. However, I can use this effect, again, like if somebody has a bunch of spells or traps on the, uh, on the field and I want them gone, I can summon this card, I get rid of one spell or trap, I activate its effect, remove it from play, and then I get to summon another harpy and get rid of a second spell or trap card. So that's really useful for that, but it's also pretty weak overall, so uh, it's not something that I would want to play unless I have these on the field, which you can see, let me just get this started, you can see, harpy lady, all wind monsters gain 300 attack. The downside to that, you didn't see it uh, in this because we didn't fight anybody that had wind monsters, but that also boosts opponents' wind monsters. So that could become a very real problem if somebody has like a 2500 damage wind monster. I'm gonna have to eat all of that. <laughs> it's not gonna end well. Uh, Harpy's Queen is, just, again, that's the strongest Harpy card besides Harpy's Sisters, uh, and it's only 50 attack less than Harpy's Sisters. Plus, you also have the secondary effect of you can discard that card into the graveyard and get a Harpy's Hunting Ground. So if I don't get a Harpy's Hunting Ground, but I do get a Harpy's Queen, I can then use that to get a Hunting Ground, which is fantastic. Now, this guy is just kind of here to be here. I don't really use him a lot, but if I do get the opportunity to use him, he's very strong. And the reason why is that you get different effects based on how many Harpies are on the field. So you see one or more. Your opponent cannot target Harpy monsters you control for attacks except for this card. So... My Harpies can't die as long as this card is on the field. Uh, well, it can die to card effects, but it can't die to battle. When there's two or more, that's when it really starts to shine. Double the original attack and death of this card. So it becomes offensively stronger than this one, but uh, defensively it still sucks. So uh, that's why I would never want to, for instance, use Harpy Channeler to bring this dude in, because even doubled, his defense still just sucks. But the third effect is extremely pot uh, potent. Once per turn, you can target one card your opponent controls, destroy that target. It's just gone. Peace out. That's very strong, especially with the amount of momentum that the Harpies can bring, where I can just, you know, if I have this card, for instance, and I have four Harpies in my graveyard, but the opponent has, like, one card out that's, like, really strong that I can't really, even if I brought back all four of those Harpies, I still wouldn't be able to deal with it. I bring back those four Harpies. I summon Harpies Pet Baby Dragon. That card's gone. Very strong, and Harpy's Pet Dragon doesn't really need any explanation. That's pretty self-evident. And then you just have kind of the mainstays, again. I kind of explained uh, why this dude is here. Oh, not to I didn't explain Totem Bird. Uh, he's Actually, do I even have any level 3s? <laughs> I don't have any level 3s. He's there for moral support. Not for anything useful. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Good, good call adding that dude. I don't know why the hell I added that dude. Uh, the one that I really... This is the level 7. I need to look through the XYZ monsters and find a better level 7. Because I don't really like this one, to be perfectly honest. Uh, but this is the only one. You know, it's a Harpy specific uh, monster. But then, let me see, let me see, let me see. This card can attack your opponent directly. So that's really good. You could potentially get 2,000 direct attack right there. Um... But your opponent cannot target any Harpy cards with effects or for attacks, so it's kind of a super Harpy's Pet Baby Dragon. But unfortunately, as you can see, during each of your end phases, detach one XYZ material from this card. So, uh, it doesn't work after three turns, so that's kind of a problem to it. But, however, I mean, honestly, if you have this card active for three turns and you can't finish somebody off, you probably weren't going to win anyway, so it's not really a problem that those effects are gone. But yeah, so there's the Harpy deck, the explanation of it and everything. I need to go find a better level 7 XYZ monster. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and other stuff will happen, I guess, soon-ish. I mean, I still want to build plenty more decks. So if these were well-received enough, I would love to do more when I actually get to the other deck building. So, thank you for watching. Peace out.